la falta de atención y la inseguridad. Y tercero, en el documento, planteamos la necesidad que la administración del presidente Trump impulse acciones mucho más enérgicas y punitivas contra la dictadura de Nicolás Maduro. El tiempo real. El, el tiempo real. Well, thank you so much. Um, good afternoon. My name is Pedro Mena. I am a lawyer and also a journalist. I'm here representing the Unidad Democrática here in Miami and representing the diaspora of Venezuela. We have a document that we will be handing to you where three positions are cl clearly stated. One of them is to thank uh, President Trump and his administration for having acknowledged uh, at a, in, a, in a very timely manner the uh, President Juan Guaidó and also the National Assembly. The second one, to be uh, to have all the actions needed to alleviate this humanitarian crisis that Venezuelans are undergoing. There is hunger, there is lack of medicine, there is insecurity. And the third one is the need for the Trump administration to uh, thrust all the actions that could be imposed on the Maduro dictatorship right away. Consideramos oportuno este momento para tomar las decisiones y todos ustedes pueden contar el senador Marco Rubio, el senador Reyes Cop, nuestro hermano Mario Díaz Valar, el gobernador del estado de Florida, Di Santi, y el embajador Abraham, en el cual le decía que tenemos muchas esperanzas en las gestiones que puede hacer él en la solución definitiva de este problema. Con el preciso presidente, vicepresidente, le voy a hacer entrega este documento que refleja el sentimiento de todos los venezolanos, de distintos partidos políticos, de diferentes organizaciones sociales y comunitarias en relación a la postura oficial que ha tenido el gobierno de Estados Unidos y nuestro congresante. Our friend Diaz Valar, the Governor de Santis, Ambassador Abram. Uh, we have hope that all this that is being done to help the people of Venezuela will be done as soon as possible. Mr. Vice President, I will be giving to you this document that shows the feeling that all the Venezuelans uh, feel and they represent different, not only political parties, but different organizations that are in the fight for the improvement and the freedom in Venezuela. Thank you so much, Pedro. Muchas gracias. Raúl. Raúl. Buenas tardes. Eh, bueno, voy a ser corto porque la verdad que sé que el, el tiempo que ustedes tienen es muy contado. Primero es agradecerle al vicepresidente, a los senadores y a, y a los representantes y al gobernador por, el, por esta reunión y por escucharnos un momento. Eh, yo soy parte de lo que es la historia más oscura del de lo que fue el régimen de Hugo Chávez, porque a mí me tocó el régimen de Hugo Chávez, expreso político durante seis años en, en la sede de la DICI, la Policía Política de Venezuela. Fui testigo de primera mano de torturas físicas, psicológicas, desapariciones forzadas de personas en los propios calabozos de la DICI, eh, burlas por parte de, lo, de altos funcionarios del gobierno, humillaciones constantes y... Fue tan, tanta la, digamos, las pruebas que nosotros reunimos en el transcurso de los años que mi caso se convirtió en la primera sentencia contra el Estado venezolano por persecución y torturas políticas. Fue un... Well, thank you very much, Mr. Vice President, Senators, Representatives, um, Governor, for calling uh, this meeting. I represent here the darkest side of the Chavez administration. I was a political prisoner for six years in a, a political uh, jail. I was the subject of for torture, physical and psychological. I was witness of um, disappeared cases people that were laughing at us and they humiliated us every turn that they, they could. I had, uh, there was so many, there was so much evidence in my case that it was the first case in where the sentence was against the dictatorship for abuses. Es eh, explicar sobre lo que pasa un preso político en Venezuela, podríamos estar todo el día. Es mucho lo que hay que decir. Y probablemente lo que ustedes escuchen aquí no llega ni a la mitad de la realidad. 
es, hay muchos, muchos más de los que se dicen hoy en día, de los 140 o 150 presos políticos que hay, personas que tienen hasta 10 y 15 años en la cárcel y que día a día son humillados ellos y su familia. Algunos, algunas familias han tenido que huir al extranjero, muchos hacia casi los Estados Unidos, para evitar que la extensión de, de la humillación y de la tortura sea más hacia la familia que hacia la misma persona que está en la cárcel. Well, actually, you know, when we talk about political prisoners in Venezuela, we could spend the whole day here. I think that we know half of what is really happening in, in those situations, and I think that the fact that people say that, that there are 140 to 150 political prisoners, this is not true. It's much more than that. And some people have been in jail for 10 or 15 years. They have been humiliated, humiliated day in and day out, and some of them had really have to leave the country, their families as well, so that they will not be subject to torture and humiliation as we were. Eh, lo único que me queda es darle gracias a este país por abrirnos las puertas a los venezolanos y darnos la oportunidad de ver desde afuera cómo todo puede ir cambiando. Ha sido lento, pero creemos que este es el momento oportuno para que la situación en Venezuela cambie y no hay más que darle las gracias a esta administración por todos los pasos que ha tomado para lograr eso. Well, thank you so much to this country for having opened the doors to, to us, to the Venezuelans that wanted to come here. Thank you for giving us the opportunities to see the situation from the outside and to be aware that the change can come, even though it might be slow, but it's time. It's time for, for change to come, and there, is, there are no words to thank this administration for everything that they have done for us. Thank you. Raul, well, thank you for being willing to tell your story, but also to speak up on behalf of all of those that are still in prison and enduring what you endured at this very hour. Um, gracias por compartir su historia y gracias por eh, hablar en nombre de aquellos que no tienen voz porque están todavía siendo prisioneros en las cárceles. I must say we're very moved uh, by uh, all the stories we've heard but also by the um, the clear intention by each of you to speak on behalf of all of those others who have gone through what you've gone through and are still going through it now. En realidad estamos sumamente emocionados por todas las historias que ustedes han compartido con nosotros, pero también queda muy claro que ustedes no están aquí solamente en nombre de ustedes, sino en nombre de todas aquellas personas que han pasado la situación que ustedes han tenido. Uh, Dr. Gottinger. El doctor, por favor. I'm going to try to be really short and stick to two or three minutes. I want to address two points. And first of all, like everybody says, I'm so thankful for you to be here. The senators, the congressman, governor, and uh, uh, ambassador. Um, my name is Dr. Rafael Gottinger. I'm a vice president of the Venezuelan American Medical Association. We're a group of doctors, Venezuelans in the USA, and we have been helping Venezuela for the past two years in this crisis. I want to stop first before I go into the second point. And just a week ago, we remember the Holocaust. I am a Holocaust survivor descendant. My father and mother were in the Holocaust. And today, I have to show this because I cannot believe what my eyes are seeing. This is real children. This child, the Venezuelan doctor were able to uh, rescue him, this child died. This is part of the humanitarian crisis that we have right now in Venezuela. I prepare for, uh, for you, uh, for the governor and the senators and uh, Mr. Abrams, some packages, but the security was checking it. So I have an extra one for you, more, more pictures, if you have the time to look at other childs that have been, have, have died and a little bit of them have survived. So that's part of the crisis that we, we have been working for two years to try to open that humanitarian aid that we need for Venezuela. So uh, about two months ago, I, Mr. Ackerman, who is right there, and myself from IVAC, uh, we were in the comfort in Colombia, across from Venezuela, as Venezuelan doctors helping the Venezuelans, the Colombians, and the Guajiros. And I think the, now we're seeing clearly the opportunity, hopefully, for the reconstruction of the Venezuelan healthcare system. And I think that we hope, as a symbolic thing, because we cannot fix Venezuela with a ship, but to ha see, have the ship in Venezuela once we can take it. And then my message is the second point. We have three points or three ways of looking at the reconstruction, immediate, intermediate, and the long term. And the immediate is 
depending on how the government change, can be a catastrophic one where we need to have really a lot of injured people or a peaceful one. And I think we should be prepared for that day, the day after, now, and not just wait for that to happen. We need to start working with, with, with all the NGOs, the government, and even with the, now the, the new government of Venezuela to try to have that prepared for that day after. And then the intermediate is how do we work on reconstructing the healthcare system, and the long term is going to take probably 10, 20 to 30 years. So we are happy to help you. There's no way how to thank for each one of you who have, I know have worked very hard. Troika of tyranny uh, does not have to be there, but your leadership, President Trump's leadership, your team's leadership has been instrumental. And I think to what Jesus said, this is the moment, and I know that you are doing everything, the president is doing everything, and I think that the inevitable is the freedom, the absolute freedom, and the return of sovereignty, in other words, the expulsion of the uh, army of occupation from Cuba. In Venezuela, that's now. Thank you for your leadership, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Senator Rubio. I don't need to speak again. I know we're running tight on time. I just want to thank you and the president for making this a priority. You never had to be convinced mm -hmm. to be a part of this, and uh, especially you who have taken it on as part of your portfolio in Lima and then within the administration. And, and I want to thank those who have spoken to us here today to remind us that those of us in public service often get a chance to do very meaningful things, but rarely do we get a chance to do historic uh, great things. And, and the cause of freedom is historic, and it's great, and it reminds us of who we are as a nation. And, and we're inspired by their stories. Amen. Thank you, Senator. Senator Scott. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for highlighting this. And I want to thank you and the President for your focus on getting this done. And we just can't stop. We've got to win. Maduro's got to step aside. And when we do, all these families will have a better life. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Senator. Governor DeSantis. Well, Mr. Vice President, I just want to welcome you and Karen to Florida. I want to thank President Trump for exercising leadership. I want to thank uh, Diaz Ballard, Senator Rubio, Senator Scott uh, for leading the charge on this, and um, the people of Venezuela. Uh, Florida stands with you. For Venezuelans who are here in Florida, you know, we're standing with you for freedom. You can count on us. Thank you, Governor. And I want to thank the First Lady uh, for being here. Uh, as well. Um, I'll have much more to say uh, uh, in the next room, but let me again just express my heartfelt appreciation to those of you who've uh, been willing to come here and to be transparent and to tell your stories. Um, on behalf of President Donald Trump, let me assure you, we are with you. The American people are with you. Uh, these leaders gathered here and this president and our administration are going to continue to stand with you until the suffering is over and freedom is restored. So thank you all, and God bless you.